Hello Achiever, today I am with a new amazing woman. She is the co-author of Outwilling the Devil. You have to, to read this book and purchase, buy it on Amazon. She's with me to answer my question, questions. She's Sharon Lecter and you will love this interview. Hello Sharon. Hello David, how are you? It's an awesome day and I'm very glad to do a new interview with you. I would like to know what is the message of Outwilling the Devil? Well, Napoleon Hill wrote the book, Think and Grow Rich, and it was released in 1937. Great book. Yes, and it's an incredible book, and over 60 to 100 million of them have been sold around the world. Yeah. But it was released, as I said, in 1937, and it was after a lifetime of work. He spent 25 years in his research and developing that book. But when it was released, he was frustrated, because he said, even though people know what they're supposed to do to be successful, yeah. they don't do it. And so he, he was frustrated, even though it was the culmination of his life's work. So he sat down and he wrote a manuscript called Outwitting the Devil that was about those self-liberty beliefs, those things that hold us back from achieving the success we deserve. But the title scared his wife to death and she forbid it from being published. And so it was locked away for 74 years. The foundation got custody of it about four or five years ago and they called me and we released it in 2011. And it really, I think there was a greater power at work because Think and Grow Rich came out and it was a huge success and yeah. is as powerful today as it was then. But I don't think the world was ready for outwitting the devil back then. But today, because of the economic turmoil we've had globally, outwitting the devil is kind of a kick in the pants to say, you know, it's our own fear. We some often are our own worst enemy. We hold ourselves back. And the book Outwitting the Devil is he addresses it head on and he introduces seven steps to help you get past those obstacles to outwit the devil, outwit those fears in order to achieve the success you deserve. Yeah, and do you know if it's a true, uh, true story because it's an, an amazing story? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what do you know about, uh, about it? Well, at the beginning of the book, Napoleon Hill, you know, he talks about his own life and he shares his own ups and downs yeah. about what led him to sit down and write the book. And he says, you know, he has this epiphany one night and he has this conversation with the devil. And he says, you, the reader, have the power. You can choose whether you think it, I was really talking to the real devil yeah. or if I was talking to an imaginary devil. It doesn't really matter if you yeah. derive benefit from what I share. Mm. And so the reader, you know, people that tend to say, oh, I don't believe in the devil and <laughs> walk away, they are demonstrating exactly what he's talking about in the book. They're letting their fear of that topic keep them from deriving benefit from the steps that he shares. So mm. it's very important for us to look at how many, how many times do we shut off our mind and not learn because we have a prejudice against something or someone. We allow our fear to prevent us from learning and moving to the next level. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Amazing story. And, uh, well, they say when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And so yeah. that sounds appropriate. <laughs> Another thing important for you is to help youth to grow. Uh, what, is, what is your message for, for youth? Well, it's so important today because the global world has changed so, so quickly economically that young people need to take accountability and responsibility for their own lives. And they need to basically say, I am going to do what I need to to provide for myself and not rely on someone else, an employer or the government. You know, don't expect the world to come to you. You go out and conquer it and achieve the life that you want because everything is, anything is possible. With the internet, it's so much easier to start a business and to market your business and communicate. And so you have a tremendous opportunity. It's never been easier to create a winning business than it is today. Yeah. You just need to get yourself aligned in what they're, the most successful business does one of two things, solves a problem or serves a need. So determine what problem or what need you're filling and you're solving a problem or you're filling a need and then go for it and create the, the solution and then share it with people that want it. And you are working on a movie right now and um, what is this movie and when, when we can see that? Well, I'm very excited. It's a movie that's based on promoting Outwitting the Devil. Yeah. And it actually is called Definitive Measures. And the screenplay is actually written about four young men who are friends at a younger age, playing cards. And they've all read the book, Outwitting the Devil. 
and they all four go in different paths. And this is a, it's kind of a it steps between a 30 year period then and now. And it's a, an incredible, incredible story, heartwarming story. One young man was born into wealth. Another one was born into um, uh, the minority world, but yet very strong Christian. Another one was hardworking, worked for everything he could, very industrious, a capitalist. And then the other one was somebody that was kind of a little bit like to walk on the edge and be a little bit of a rogue. And so it talks about all their four personalities and philosophies and how each one of them internalized messages from outwitting the devil to change their lives. And what's the main message at the end of the movie? What do you get when you finish the movie? Well, the, the movie is intended to take those principles of conquering fear and taking control of your own life and becoming the CEO of your own life, putting yeah. yourself in the driver's seat and making sure that anything is possible. When you're driving a car, you have a big windshield and you can go anywhere you want to. You have that choice. You have a small rear view mirror because only learn from your past. Just take what helps you and, pre and helps you speed your way in the future. Don't let the past define you. And my last question, uh, I don't know if you can answer now, but uh, I ask you that. I have a lot of women uh, following me now, so you, you, will read, you will write a book for women, Think and Grow Rich for Women. Do you have some keys for the women who are, who are following us now to succeed in life and think and grow rich? Well, it's very important because a lot of, particularly young women, read Think and Grow Rich as it was written in the 1930s. Yeah. And of course, back then there were very few women in the workforce. And so it was written primarily about men who were successful and by men through for men, th yeah, yeah for, for men and through men's eyes. And so a lot of young women read it and feel like it's quite sexist and chauvinistic. Well, no, it really isn't. It was just the facts of life at that point in time. Yeah. And so many of us who are a little bit older, who found value in the original Think and Grow Rich, that are women, realize and take the strength and the nuggets of truth out of the book and then applied them to our lives. And so we, it, my goal is to take and parallel Think and Grow Rich with Think and Grow Rich for Women. I'm only including women in it, and I'm drawing women from history, some that are not with us anymore, but their philosophies and their actions on how they created success in their lives and how those success principles are the same yeah. as what's shared in Think and Grow Rich. And then I'm talking to women leaders today that are in, leaders in the spiritual world, leaders in the um, economic world, in the business world, all around the globe. Um, women who are celebrities and people know, other women you don't know, and some are just starting out, but they're, they're finding strength from the messages shared in, in Think and Grow Rich, and I want to make it so it's easier to read and easier to understand for women that will be able to see those principles of success that are crafted by women for women. So do, do you have just one advice today for women? Well, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's do not enter a room with a chip on your shoulder. Do not enter the room as a woman wanting to do business. Enter a room as a business person wanting to do business. And the fact that you're a woman should be an attribute. But don't go in there with a chip on your shoulder because that, the, the ability to collaborate is where the future of business is. And women are much better collaborators. So the, it's really a perfect tipping point we now have over 50% of women in the workforce. Wow. And that's just happened in the last couple of years. So we have, we have that opportunity as women to redefine in a positive way the business culture. And this is a huge opportunity, which is why we're doing the book now. Right. Do you know when we can find this book? Well, it's going to be released in May or June of 2014. Yeah, just say me, I will promote it. Good. Yeah. Excellent. We'll count on you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was awesome. My, my pleasure.